Welcome to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller. I invite you to join me as I interview artists from a variety of disciplines. We'll share powerful stories and lessons learned while making their art. Good day, listeners. You're listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast with Chris Miller, your host. Um, I wanted to take you on a special journey today, kind of review my book and talk about a chapter in there and share some stories. So let me tell you about my morning. When I got up this morning, I had two different things happen to me, two different experiences. One was very moving and the other was upsetting. So one was positive in my eyes and one felt negative. First, I walk around my yard in the morning with a cup of coffee on Sunday, and I spied this small lizard curled up sweetly on one of my orchid leaves. Just within the bend of the leaf, his body was stretched out, just laying there, enjoying the sun, stretched out with his eyes closed, fully asleep, but totally blended into the shape of the leaf. It was really quite amazing. It was an experience of seeing nature at its best and how the animal kingdom has adapted to work within the boundaries of, of what their reality is. And he looked so pleasantly happy that it just filled me with joy. And I thought, ah, there's my moment of awe, my moment of awe for the morning. So moments of awe are when we see something that feels just inspiring, that takes away our breath. And I talk about that in my book, but it didn't last long because as you know, our phones seem to be with us and messages pop up. And I've told myself for a long time now that I need to turn off these messages that pop up and interrupt my stream of thought. But a message popped up from that application called Nextdoor. Nextdoor neighbors, what it does is it gets you in touch with the neighborhood around you. And it's a great application when you're looking for someone to sell something to or when you want to find something or you want to uh, share a recipe or help locate a lost stray pet. It's great. But it also has come to be almost a, a carrier of negative thoughts. Sometimes there are people on there that are very full of fear. And I've noticed this rising stream of people that are very fearful when someone approaches their house. And sure enough, a post popped up where a man described that he came home in the afternoon yesterday from work, and there was some man that sitting on his front porch, and he described him in stereotypical ways that he, he was upset, and he questioned the guy, why are you here? Nevertheless, there was an altercation. The guy ran off. But what bothered me most was that this man, instead of seeing it as an opportunity and walking up to his house and saying, hi, can I help you? What can I do for you? He immediately started attacking him. Why are you on my porch? And as you know, when we approach things with fear, we receive what we believe. And when we approach people with fear, we're going to get a fearful response. And it just disheartened me. So this is an interesting balance between what I talk about as moments of awe. On one hand, I saw this beautiful act of nature, this lizard laying on a leaf, happy and pleased. And on the other hand, I saw or I perceived a situation that I felt was negative. And so I'm dealing with both of those things in the morning and processing which path should I choose. So that brought me back to this chapter in my book. It's an early chapter, and I thought I'd share it with this episode. It's called Moments of Awe, and explain what moments of awe are. Moments of awe, for me, it was a way to tell the listener, the spiritual artist listening, to be creative, but being creative by seeking the beauty in everyday life, accepting what is, getting yourself into alignment as a spiritual artist, and then being in that alignment when you work. When you're in that alignment, you see God in every stroke, every brush stroke. And instead of getting angry, instead of resisting what is, the size of the canvas, the colors that you're using, to flow with it, to surrender to it, and actually work within the realm of what you're getting. And so when I see moments of awe in life, I can take it into my studio and see moments of awe in what I'm working on. That leads us as artists to new creative work, to 
different paths instead of forcing what we're working on down the same path over and over again. It leads us to follow a stroke. Maybe you add a strange errant color to your canvas and at first you go, Ugh, I, I, I don't like that. But what if, what if you do like it? What if you surrender to it, accept it and use that color and keep going with it? Follow the trail that that color led you to. See where the painting takes you because the painting or the clay or the jewelry or the glasswork, it's all talking to you. It's all communicating to you as an artist. Take that work, take that message, take that errant color and see where it leads you. It will lead you somewhere new as a creative artist. But you can also take that message into your life. And a spiritual artist, they don't just work in the art room, but they take that message out into their life and perceiving the beauty with whatever situation arises. And so I encouraged my book readers to get up in the morning and find that beauty in their, in their house, in their yard, in their life. And by focusing on that beauty, of course, it would bring more and more beauty into their reality. Once again, we receive what we believe. And so by focusing on the beauty of life or the good things in life, because it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical act of beauty, it could just be something, the intricacy of something that this lizard so carefully laying on that leaf, it can be incredible. It can change us and it can put us in the consciousness of receiving spirit. Well, shortly after my book came out, one reader called me uh, actually a friend of mine who read the book, and she was so moved by that chapter. And she shared with me a story and she kind of explained it almost better than I did in my book. She explained that she had read the chapter about moments of awe and she was out of town and she was on vacation and she was feeling out of sorts and she decided to go for a walk. And as she went on that walk, she started noticing moments of awe, the beautiful flowers on a hill, the way the sun was shining, the cloud formation. And then as she approached the city, she started noticing the beauty in people. And it was funny, as she explained her story to me, she said, I started seeing God in everyone. And she went on to say how she proceeded to go through the city and had the most incredible experience, such an experience that she had to call me afterwards and tell me how wonderful she was she felt because she chose to walk down the street and she walked into a store and she saw God in the teller at the front desk. She saw God in the other shoppers. She saw God in what she was shopping for. What she felt though, was that she saw God in everything, whether it was physical, through humanity or through a thing, she saw the God in it. And when she said that to me, I realized that she had switched from a moment of awe to a moment of God. That's where she explained it almost better than I did because I thought, yes, yes, that is what a moment of awe is. A moment of awe is seeking and seeing God in everything. That includes yourself. And when she did that, she aligned herself with the channel of God, the love channel of God, and everything fell into alignment. So it's about Seeing God in all the situations that approach you, it's, it's not always easy, is it? It's certainly not always easy. So last week, I had lunch with a good friend of mine, someone I hadn't seen in a while, and I noticed through Facebook and sharing texts that he was, had a very rough time health-wise. It was very challenging. And he was in a great frame of mind. His back was still hurting him, and he was trying to do everything he could to fix the situation, the pain that he was experiencing, the sciatica that he was experiencing without taking surgery. But what he told me, which I thought was really wonderful, is he said that he chose to look at this pain in his life, this bad back, this being in bed, excruciating pain, and see the good in it. He chose to see what was good in it. And he said, what's brought me the best and most joy in my life is seeing the message that comes in everything that happens to us. What positive message can he get from this? And we went on and shared stories about how we were both working on our diets and what we we're eating. And he explained how the back and his trouble with the back showed him that 
he wasn't eating correctly and that he was out of shape and they needed to take care of himself. And that even though the pain was not something he would choose and it's not something that he would accept, he surrendered to it. He surrendered to the message in the health situation. Now, I wanna say this, I wanna be very clear about this. I'm not telling you that pain is good or that health situations are good because they're not. They're very challenging, debilitating, and can even lead us to separation from our loved ones. However, there is a moment, and we talked about this, my friend and I, where you have to surrender to the experience. Only by surrendering, and that doesn't mean when I say surrender, I don't mean saying, yes, this is okay, but it is saying, yes, this is. This is here and now. My back hurts. It's right here and now. It's very painful. I can't do anything else. It's debilitating. But when we surrender to it, we can hear the message that comes from it. And there is a message because everything, I like to, to, to remind you of this, everything has God in it. God is speaking to us through everything in our life. So listeners, I ask you as you go on today to look at all the situations that approach you, every experience that approaches you, whether it's someone cutting you off in traffic, someone being heartless and mean to you, but look at it and see what is the message in this and try, try to see the God in that experience. I know it's challenging. It's really not easy, but try to see the God in in that experience, because God is in all, all things. God is in all things. And that idea of duality, and duality is when we believe that we are other than, that we are separate from, that we are not connected to all the things around us. It is a very strong, incorrect belief that has propagated across the world where one country thinks it's not the same as another, one religion thinks it's not the same as another. It's when we disrespect the nature around us, we disrespect the planet or animals or the neighbor across the street. But when we don't see the God in them, that we are all connected, we are all connected, we are all one. And so when you start your day seeing that connection, take a deep breath, Sit down and just be present to God around you, to spirit around you, to this energy force around you. Whatever you call it, whatever you want to name it is insignificant because this power, this energy is greater than a name. And so when you get the, my book, or if you read that Moments of Awe chapter, I want to remind you that you are actually, you're seeing the beauty, you're seeing the good in everything, you're seeing the God in everything. You're seeing the God in everything. This conversation reminds me of an older podcast I did with an artist. He is a songwriter and singer, Gary Lynn Floyd, and I'm going to reference him in the description of this podcast. I encourage you to go back and listen to it. It's one of my favorite interviews where he talks about his creative process, but he has this wonderful song that he focuses on, and I love it. It's called God in everyone. And in the lyrics, he says, I see God in everyone. Something to focus on, something for the spiritual artist to remember is that the practice, it's not always easy. Like I said, it wasn't easy for me this morning when I saw something pop up in my feed, the, but it's a practice to see God in everyone and everything that happens to us. So I encourage you to go listen to that song after this interview and take that music with you into your work studio. See God in everyone, everything. And it's a beautiful song because it reminds us that God is in everything. Every situation is God bringing a message to us. Now, let's go back to my morning experience um, because obviously I could see God very quickly in the lizard but not so easy in the neighbor on next door neighbor. But really, I should be able to see the God in that post. I should realize that the person that posted that is really actually quite afraid. They're afraid of people approaching their house. They're afraid of people um, 
being near them. They're afraid of people that are different from them. And so to see the God and to see that and to, to not get mad at the person because they posted this, but to see where they're at and, re and understand where they're at. Now, that doesn't mean I accept it, but I surrender to it. I surrender to what is. I surrender to the fact that this person is fearful, that they haven't been able yet, yet to see God in everything. And so helping them by getting angry or posting something negative back or, or, or I have to say, even this kind of flushed up on me, being joyful when someone else posted something negative back, that's not going to advance anything because I'm not seeing the God in the situation. Now, there's a message in that whole situation. There's a message for me. There's a message for him. And I might not be able to handle or to process what I can do for this neighbor except for to wish him love. Both the person that was on his porch, maybe looking for help, maybe with ill will, and send love to the person that owned the house. That he's just, it's just a house. It's not that important. He doesn't need to get all so protective about it. So all those things are there, but I need to see the message for me. And the message for me is to recognize and remember that even though people aren't always going to do what I agree with, even though their actions aren't going to always be in alignment with what I think is right. I can see and I should see the God in them. And when I see the God in them, it takes away, it diffuses. It diffuses the anger and I'm able to hear them better. And I'm better, a, a, better able to hear God in the message. So when I go back to my lunch and with my friend, it's that surrender. We surrender to the situation. And then like he did, he started changing his diet. He started watching how he was sitting. He started watching how he was moving. He got more in touch with his body. He recognized that God was telling him he was disconnected from his body. And his body is God too. We are mind, spirit, and body. All three. And God is within all three. And so the message was there for him to slow down and get in touch with his body. So I ask you today to try that, to try taking a moment right now slowing down, and learning to see God in everything. Thank you, and have a great day being a spiritual artist. Thank you for listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Whether you're following the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, make sure you choose the subscribe button so you'll receive new segments when they're released. Plus, check out my new book, The Spiritual Artist, now available on Amazon.com. In the meantime, be still, listen, and know that you are a spiritual artist.